Today on Great Places Seen, it's the annual Hershey RV Show. It has named itself America's largest, and no doubt, it's extremely big. Buckle up for tours of 16 trailers that caught my eye as we consider their many merits and perhaps lesser attributes. Welcome to Hershey. So for this year at the Hershey RV Show, I'm going to look at trailers mostly under 20 feet for that solo traveler now that I'm in the solo category. And I've decided I'm going to score each of them on eight points. One, of course, price. I mean, you want affordability and uh, the wall dollar cost. I mean, it all comes down to dollars and cents. So you want to know how it fares price wise. Resale after two years. This is kind of an interesting subjective category, but you want your trailer to last and you want a good trailer that is going to be something that you can get a little money out of if you find that this isn't the thing for you or if you want to change to a different trailer after about two years of use and you figure, well, I need something a little bit different. Also, I want to look at quality, the perceived build quality, the durability of the RV. How is this thing going to last? You know, all RVs are not created equal. So that's one of the categories I'm certainly taking a close look at. Maintenance. Is it going to cost you a lot to take your RV to the dealer? Uh, certainly taking your RV to the dealer is not fun to have it serviced because, well, you're out of commission for a while. And as we know, it can take a long time to get your RV repaired. Perhaps you can do the work yourself. So I'd like to see how easy it is to do the DIY maintenance on each of these trailers. Towability, weight, length, even how far off-road you can go with some of these. Maneuverability, it's all very important. And if you want to go off-road, you really can extend your experience in RV travel. Amenities, how many amenities do each trailer have? Uh, do they fit your needs? Amenities is always something that everybody's looking at when they're considering purchase of an RV. Maybe you need a lot, maybe you don't need anything. Uh, that's up to you, but uh, amenities is certainly one of the uh, scores on the list. Appeal, the aesthetics and comfort of the RV. Some RVs look really cool, others are just kind of a bland box. So let's check out and see what each of these look like uh, in relation to each other. And then the last category I have is long-term livability. Perhaps you're only gonna use your rig for just the weekend. And so you don't need a whole lot to go out and experience a camping RV life. Perhaps you're gonna go on a long road trip for months at a time or even live in it. A lot of people live in their trailers. So how well can these trailers meet your needs depending on how long you want to spend in the trailer? These are the eight categories that I'm looking at as I'm going through each of the trailers that we're looking at today at the Hershey RV Show. First, a word about pricing. You'll see lots of signs with lots of numbers. Most don't mean anything at all. Suggested retail price is always slashed. Hidden fees abound. So, when you see a sign, look a little past it to read more. Find more video from the Hershey RV Show on my second channel. Please subscribe for free to both so you don't miss anything. GPS 2. You know, it's kind of like those DVDs with bonus material. Half the show, it seems, is filled with Forest River. The Palomino Solaire 2080 RBS is 24 feet long and about 4,800 pounds of decent amenities. It feels like a large space, well, thanks to a slide. There's a nice curved glass shower door. Three burner stove, modest sink, and it does well for storage. The sofa has two nice swivel trays with cup holders. <laughs> cup holders are always a seller, right? An outside griddle, electric tongue jack, and decent tank sizes round out a solid package. Perhaps you'd call this a cottage industry? Forest River's Wolf Pup 16 BHSW is just over 21 feet long, 
5,500 pounds, with a little more of an off-grid feel. Its generous awning shades a small outside refrigerator and the entrance to a modest average build quality interior that has a nice Greystone two-burner stove. The bathroom and shower are very basic. A large door opens to storage under the bottom bunk. <laughs> Junior could have a convenient exit at times. The tanks might be a little small for more than two people. The price seems more for its mobility than amenities. Wolfpup has been one of the company's steady sellers for a while. The Gulfstream Trail Boss 1090K is very compact. An outside kitchen is covered by the large rear door. It has a decent sink, microwave, and refrigerator. The cabinet doors will need your help staying open. A super basic interior for sitting or sleeping will cool or heat fast because of its small size. A tiny side window, the door and skylight fan do let enough light in. The Trail Boss 140BH is a nice step up from the 1090K and I think it makes the price difference worth it. Again, it has tires and height clearance to go off-grid. A U-shaped dinette with a modest kitchen and a nice greystone two-burner stove go with two forward bunk beds and a basic wet bath. It'll start to feel tight past one or two people, but it appears it will get you back into the woods nicely. It's a small, basic setup that, for the money, if you're looking more for campgrounds, other options may be better. Again here with Matt of Matt's RV Review. Thank you for having me again. Thank you. Uh, you were so gracious to speak with me last oh, year. Yeah, and wow, uh, you're, you're even doing it again this year. Thank despite you. That. Always, <laughs> always, always. Well, the liquefied brand has really taken off this year. I yes, mean, sir. lots of people are talking about it. If anybody knows a thing or two about a stinky black tank, of this guy. <laughs> well, you've got the prime pooping position always. Yes. And actually, you've expanded it now. Yep. You've yep. got what? So we got gray tank cleaner, to uh, toilet bowl cleaner, and um, our original liquefied RV holding tank treatment. Doing reviews. Yes. How did, how did you get involved yeah, doing this? What was the idea behind it? Well, um, Matt's RV reviews wasn't like a real business, quote unquote. It was like a sole proprietorship. Like it's like a really good job. But we wanted to create a business where we could grow and you know sell stuff even when we're working or at a show. And that's how we started with Liquefied. Well. Doing a great job. Thank you, Matt. Thank and you. Appreciate seeing you here. Thank you. Thanks right. for having me on your show again. Absolutely. The name Coachman Apex Nano Off-Grid tells you what this one aims to accomplish. Nice large rectangular stainless steel sink with a matching counter cover, two burner graystone stove, microwave, modest cabinet space. You do have a combination refrigerator freezer. A lot of freezer space in there, that's always good. This model has bunk beds. Nice thing with these bunks, both have lighting. You'll see a lot of models that only have one lit or only one has a window. Well, no picking your favorite kid here. They're both the same. Pretty standard shower. More cabinets as you look toward the front. Plenty of room, very basic. 
An outside griddle with decent tank sizes makes this appear a decent buy. Coachman's remote series is even more geared to get out into nature. The 18-2R has an upscale exterior look with LED light trim and a decent awning. You can even get a nice bike rack on the front. Rather interesting design outside panel. This is actually looks like a window cover. You can see from the inside it's a uh, standard window cutout. These windows each have lower sections that are screened and you can pop out the uh, cover that's on the outside of the trailer for ventilation. Average counter space thanks to a rather small sink. This particular model has bunk beds and as we've seen in the other coachman, you don't have to play favorites here. Both bunks get a window, both bunks get lights. Again, very standard bathrooms in here. Asdale used to be quite a selling point. Uh, it's pretty much standard now on all of these. I, I've really seen very few other than all fiberglass models of uh, trailers that didn't have Asdale. It's a very basic layout with average build quality. While it can sleep four, one or two is comfortable. The tanks are large, weight low, a couple of nice perks overlooks an average build. The huge inward slanted front window is the trademark look for Intex Soul Series. The Eclipse has a nice front kitchen with a wraparound counter and plenty of storage. A cozy U-shaped dinette may be a little tight to move in and out of. The cabinet hinges are very strong and sturdy, easily holding the doors open. The kitchen is the easiest area to move around in. Generous drawers, some underneath storage. The wet bath is very modest, but it does have a large door mirror, important for some people. The windows have pull-down blackout shades. Up front is an electric tongue jack with open utility storage, a solid trailer for a couple or solo traveler. It's not quite a Tesla pulling a 911, but you get the idea. Going upscale is the Airstream Base Camp 20X. If you like being surrounded by aircraft aluminum inside and out, well, it's perfect. It's also a lot of this trailer's cost. Lots of open storage spaces and pockets with cargo netting surround modest seating areas. So it looks like you can move the table. The appliances are decent. The metallic interior reflects light to make a small space seem a little larger. The wet bath is basic. More netting for the larger kitchen storage areas. The ceiling max air fan is very quiet. Lightweight, 20 feet long, average tank sizes. People often ask me, who do I follow? Well, it's the guy with the popcorn. That's who I follow. Fresh lemonade, popcorn, and water. The Hershey RV show has plenty of vendors inside and out. 
you can find just about anything you need to accessorize, repair, replace, or upgrade your rig. Travel groups, campgrounds, and state parks are here to help you find places to camp. You'll be able to spend as much time looking at everything here as you would walking the acres of RVs outside. Speaking of outside, that's where I found the Cortez 18BB. It's all fiberglass. No wood to be found, unless you brought some. Cortez is made in Cleveland, and they continue to innovate their trailers, as this one has a few changes from last year, with a composite bumper and no axle. The wheels are independently mounted. Inside, it has European styling, a good-sized wet bath, a curved stainless steel sink in the kitchen, refrigerator, microwave, stainless steel drawers. Seating along its length that easily goes flat for sleeping. Lots of sturdy storage doors you normally see on the outside of trailers. You could hose it all down if you like, remove a couple of plugs and they say it'll drain out in about 10 minutes. It even floats. Very lightweight. Short, modest tank sizes, reasonably priced for all fiberglass, great solo travel size. The Keystone Passport 190RD lets you spread out a bit in this modestly built unit. This lets in a lot of light thanks to that big, huge rear window. My favorite, separate freezer and refrigerator. The sink is quite large. You get a two burner stove, overhead microwave, and of course your complement of storage space above and below. Looks like more below than above. Wardrobe closet. And that's fairly deep. The TV probably isn't mounted any sturdier than in any other rig, but the framing makes it look more substantial. And a decent sized dry bath. A basic bed. Awning. Standard road tires. Modest outside storage can't see it because of the big box, but it passes through all the way. Decent amount of space under there. Predominantly light colors and an almost full rear picture window gives a sense of luxury to a basic trailer and plenty of airflow to keep the interior comfortable while sitting out in the full sun on a warm day. Good tank sizes too. Seems impressive on a budget. Here is the A-Liner 40th Anniversary Edition. Wow, hard to believe they've been out that long. Well, this is certainly one color. Uh, you're not going to mistake your rig for somebody else's. A-Liner, you may say, is the origami of RVs. As the entire roof folds up or down, depending on which way you're going, into a nice flat trailer. And as you can see, it creates plenty of headroom in the middle. I can't quite touch the seam up there. I'm 5'11". Little dinette area. You can convert it into a sleeping area, of course. Two burner stove and a sink. A black accent sink. A small refrigerator and a rear seating slash sleeping area. Roll down shades to black out the windows. It's a good basic rig. Full disclosure, I'm a satisfied new camp owner. The TAG and TAB 320 have long been great for solo travel, but today I'm looking at the new TAB 360 which is positioned between the 320 and the larger 400. 
very similar to the prototype that we saw at UCAMP, although this is a production model and some refinements have been made, as you would expect. The only knock I've heard about the 360 is having this combination sink and stove because, well, where's the countertop, right? You have no counter space. However, I have it under good authority that there may be a new edition of the 360 coming out with a clamshell in the back. So that'll take care of the kitchen issue. It's a very deep 12 volt refrigerator. The wet bath is adequate. A 12 volt smart TV. Lots of well thought out storage with New Camp's trademark quality Amish cabinetry. There's even this little unique entryway cabinet. It has lithium batteries, solar, and is built for solid off road travel. I think it's a great solo option. You may feel it's a bit pricey but it has great build quality and decent resale value as a result. Well, the Hershey RV show is in full swing now. This is uh, day number two and uh, quite a bit different from industry day. Uh, you can see there are a lot more people out here checking out the RVs. A lot of deals to be had. A lot to see here. This is what I never understood. They take the time to mold an interior for a bathroom, but then put in a flat shelf. Why can't you mold a shelf that has an indention so that things don't fall out while you're in transit? This way you have to pull everything off, put it away, put it back, or maybe put some netting in or something to, to keep your things in there while you're in transit because then every time you're setting up your bathroom and taking it down again. I don't understand. If it's molded, why can't you mold it so that it's actually useful in transit? The Bontrager Radical 12 RAD is for serious off-road adventures. The newly acquired company has revamped its entire lineup. Its nearly 16-foot, 3,100-pound rig has a basic interior with a portable toilet, standard with all models, not much for inside storage. A rear outside kitchen with a blackstone grill also has an outside shower. The tires and suspension on a rigid, tough frame are what you get for the money to head deep into the back country. You'll carry propane with a modest open cargo storage platform. It's definitely suited for solo travel and perhaps with a friend. The Keystone Rain 15RB touts its power capabilities with a lithium and solar package to keep trailer amenities going in the middle of nowhere. Modestly aggressive tires help get you there. The pass-through storage, though, is compromised a bit. Inside, a Murphy bed opposes a floor-lit dinette to give you the feel the rig is powered. Open-cut wood cabinetry is aimed at a more futuristic motif, while the amenities are essentially basic. The shower certainly isn't anything new. Good bathroom storage is offered. A pull-out freezer drawer is always nice. Of course, there are places to plug in and charge your devices. Vented screened windows help for airflow. I'm not too keen about the exposed plumbing lines below the sink, but there is easy access if that's what you have to fix one day. The usual outside features are framed with colored LED lighting. It seems more hype than substance. Winnebago's Micro Mini line has long been a solid favorite. 
The 1800 BH, like the other models, has little tweaks and changes this year, but overall I'm seeing the same rig that has proven itself for the last few years. Amenities are straightforward and thoughtful. Color schemes neutral, but pleasing. Bathroom is basic. Twin bunks with lights and windows. A decent sized sink with half covers that help add counter space. A three burner stove. Winnebago continues to have a solid package, whether you're solo or with others. The Intec Toxa Cricket X is another off-road rig that is designed to be rugged while offering ways to customize your travel preferences. It may be a tight fit for a young family like the brochure shows, but good for solo or a pair. It will have enough room for a week, perhaps more. The pop-up top expands the living area. The Spartan interior has compartmentalized storage so you can haul and organize whatever gear you want to take along. The articulating hitch will roll with the terrain, so your tow vehicle will also make the trip in one piece. It's just 15 feet long and 3,000 pounds. Enclosed propane, an awning, and metal trim help you feel this is a tough rig. Thanks for watching. You made it to the end. High fives for everyone. Well, perhaps it's not the end. If you want to see more, head to Great Places Scene 2. Subscribe for free and view all the extra bonus video there.